As with the Notifier example, there is a template built into the Frameworks section of the new file menu item within LabVIEW. Choose the Producer Consumer Design Pattern for Events. This will create the code as we see here. It looks very much like the Notifier example. Again, we have two loops, whereas before we had a master and a slave, we're now calling it Producer and Consumer. The key difference being that the producer can create more than one command at a time, and the consumer goes through and consumes those commands, one element at a time. Again, let's begin by investigating the four key functions that operate on queues. First is obtain queue, which very much like the notifier has the input of giving it a name, a data type, create if not found, and there's one fundamental difference here, which is a queue size. The key difference between queues and notifiers, however, is that queues have a queue size. In this case, we can leave it unconnected, which gives us an unlimited queue size, or we can enter in a constant value here. The queue size allows us to specify how many different elements can be contained in the queue at any one time. Similar to the send notification, we have here the NQ element. What this does is it puts a value onto the queue. In this case, again, because the data type is defined to be a string, our element type is a string. Here, we take the queue reference as an input, and the purpose of the NQ element is to place the element here at the end of the queue. Remember that the queue is first in, first out, meaning whatever we put in here actually goes on the end of the queue. What we have in our bottom loop is the DQ element. What this does is it takes our queue and pulls off an element from it, if there is an element there to be removed. If not, it will sit, much like the notifier, and wait until either a queue is present or the timeout has elapsed. So similarly on the output, we have our element, which tells us what the queue value was, and the timed out boolean, which tells us whether or not an element was received or whether the timeout has occurred. In addition, there's an error output, which will tell us if the queue has been destroyed or if there's another problem. And finally, we have release queue, which very much like the release notifier, destroys our refnum and will cause any queue functions acting on that queue to return an error. So let's modify this example slightly. We'll start off in our consumer loop. When we receive a message in our queue, we're going to perform a simple one button dialog and connect up the queue element to the message. This will pop up and tell us if something has been queued. Secondly, we're going to modify our event structure slightly. We see here we have a queue event button. Let's rename this to be run. And we'll modify the label to match. So what we want to have happen when we run is not just queue on element. Let's queue on acquire make a duplicate of this, string the error and the queue reference together, do acquire and save. Remember, the key difference between queues and notifiers is that queues allow us to set up multiple elements in sequence. So let's return to the front panel and run this. When we click the run button, we see we get acquire and then save, and then we're back to our standard state where we can push the stop button. So let's watch that one more time, this time with execution highlighting turned on. When we run the loops, we see that our queue gets created. Both loops go into a waiting state. The top loop is waiting for an event to occur, and the bottom loop is waiting for something to be in queued. As soon as I push the run button, observe how the top loop immediately puts the acquire queue in and the save queue in. Now, we see how our bottom loop has entered into the acquire state. We're sitting here waiting for the user to press the OK button. As soon as we do so, that loop finishes, and it immediately fires again, this time with the save element coming off. This demonstrates a very powerful point, which is that we've sent multiple commands into the queue to be executed, and they get pulled off one at a time. And, of course, when we return to the front panel and push the stop button, the first loop finishes, which releases the queue, 
and then the second loop returns with an error.